Hi, I'm Dawn Monafusco, life coach for writers and creatives. And this is the Ultimate Writer Series, how to break through resistance, ignite your muse, and honor your soul's calling. And today we have one of my favorite people and special guest, Shelly Klammer. Shelly is a depth-oriented psychotherapist and a registered expressive arts educator with the International Expressive Arts Therapy Association. Her writing has been featured in Good Therapy, Psych Central, Psychology Today, and numerous other publications. Shelly offers online therapy for creative people internationally, and she has created over 20 online courses that support deep emotional healing. Hi, Shelly. Oh, hi, Dawn. Love so good to see you. Yes, I know. I love chatting with you. It's so oh, I'm so excited about the subject. So before we get started, let's just go right to you. Tell us a little about what you do and any, uh, any projects or what you're working on these days. Okay. So I just wanted to introduce my new art and writing studio. I've just moved in in, oh gosh, maybe the last two weeks. And so I am. I have just moved into a communal art studio. So I'm in a space with other writers and other artists. And we all have our private spaces and we have communal space where we can hang out together and talk. And everyone's very... Oh, well, just deeply contemplative and very into their <laughs> own writing and art processes, which which I love too. And this is also the space where I do my online therapy during the day. And then I have uh, one day where I dedicate and I come in and I do my writing and my art. And okay. then two days a week I do my therapy in this space as well. And I'm also in the midst of a self publishing process and this was a book that I never really intended to write but it was started about I guess seven or eight years ago I was uh, very depressed after Christmas holidays back in my full-time job in healthcare and I wanted to start doing the uh, 365 of course in miracles lessons oh I love that one I've been doing it too that's crazy Yes, and so I've always had trouble with the languaging in the book because it's quite masculine, as you know, and religious. And so I had the insight to sort of uplift out of my depression. I would rewrite the, each lesson in my own uh, creative, sort of more feminine, emotional language. And so that's what I did for that year, and it really helped me. And then I turned it into an e-course, and now I'm turning it into a Kindle book. So it'll be published by the end of this year. Oh, I'm so buying that. That's awesome. I can't even tell you. I'm, I'm on like lesson 83 and I had to, you know, manage my mind around the masculine language. Uh, but it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Oh, I can't wait for that book. That's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. I have a question. You just mentioned something and I love it. You time block. I like how you time blocked your art and your therapy. So you spend how many days? Uh, do you give yourself for just art, like a whole day? Yeah, I, I just have a whole day. Today today actually is my, my writing uh, and creation day. And then the other days I do my therapy work and I do my, I have online students too, so I do it in between my, my therapy work. So yeah, there is one dedicated art day. And then I also, you know, I'll create art when I come for in for a therapy day first thing in the morning. That's what I've been doing since I started. That's, I love that. I don't know how that didn't occur to me to do that because, uh, I've been talking a lot about time blocking and that one dedicated day sounds just so luscious. So I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause it brings me to work in different day, different ways. Of different yeah. of our life, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that we can dive right in then to the resistance question. So you, you really had, you know, an amazing life of self discovery uh, in lots of interviews. You're very authentic and vulnerable um, about your journey and how you even came to, to, to discover spontaneous art, I think you call it, I'm not sure. Um, tell us a little bit about creativity and how it helped you discover the real you, if you will. Yeah, so one thing I discovered really early in on in my expressive art and writing is, is I started to notice that I had different parts of self. Mm. And so that particularly came through um, my collage work. And then when people started in therapy to submit uh, their collages to me, I started to notice, oh, there's four or five, six different parts in this collage. And so what comes, so we have our, you know, our ordinary 
personality, which you and I are sort of meeting in our social personality right now, but we also have some forgotten parts and we have repressed parts and we have younger parts that are unhealed. Mm. So, um, you know, I, I, I started to, to, to see those coming through and that was a great revelation to me. So, um, that's what I started to discover that some parts kind of wanted to go forward, some parts mm. wanted to go back and, you know, and layer after layer after layer, I just keep finding more and more interesting aspects of self and it just gets deeper as you go. No, oh, I love that. I was, you know, uh, there's a thing, Gaia, the Gaia channel, the Gaia.com. It's an app. And it's, one of the things that just keeps coming up over and over is to, to be who you really are. You know, that in order to feel really fulfilled and creativity, I'm, I would, I'm sure you'd feel the same way. I feel like everyone uh, wants to express creatively and, and at least, I mean, I can't imagine someone not wanting to, but some people will say, oh, I'm not creative, that kind of thing. Um, in your experience, tell me about the healing nature of creativity, because there's a lot of talk going on that just like yoga and acupuncture and meditation has now reached sort of the mainstream uh, medical uh, you know, world where they will prescribe that, say, oh, you might want to do a little meditation or this and that. There's rumor that creativity is about to be bounced into uh, one of the best ways to heal. Yeah, well, I think, like I, I was alluding to earlier, that creativity just addresses our whole self. So yeah. we're entrained when we're raised uh, into the sort of group think of our school, our families, our religions. Mm. And so we, we get to learn really early who we have to be in order to be sort of loved and approved of from, from the outside. So mm. when you start to do spontaneous creativity and you start to see these parts that you've maybe even never met before, um, they've never had their chance to live in your ordinary life, then there's something very healing because we are just so much bigger mm. than we are. You know, we're taught to fit in a little box and go do that full-time job and earn that low wage. And, you know, that's typically yeah. how many of us are trained in the school systems and the public school systems. And so creativity is just, especially spontaneous creativity, where you start to let all the different aspects of yourself come up to be witnessed and seen, well, then you start to heal because you realize, mm. oh, I have this in me, I have that in me, I'm much larger than I thought I was, I guess mm. I could, I think I could, than I thought I could, you know? I love that, I love that so much. Um, now let's jump to the resistance part. So creative resistance presents, obviously, in different forms. Can you speak to what kinds of resistance you've had to battle with um, in life, in, in creative life, in writing, in, in art, that kind of thing? Yeah, this was such a neat question because one thing when I think about you is I think about your this, this line that you've had in the past, write your true story, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that I've written many versions of my true story because – um, you know, 10 years ago when I was in my therapy training, I wrote my autobiography, but, you know, to read it back now, um, everything that sort of activated me emotionally about that biography is, is, is neutral now. It's healed. It's just, it doesn't even seem very interesting to me. Now I'm on a deeper layer. So I would write a whole different story and I'm planning to, um, what I've been doing over the past 20 years as has been writing about the art of emotional healing, because what happened um, I've spoken about this several times in different interviews is I went through a crisis induced spiritual awakening where um, five people in my immediate family died uh, within the period of a year. And so everything opened up and literally my, I could feel my crown chakra open and I could see this great big, huge sort of visionary life. And I could see I was living in this little box. And so I, created this huge life change like I just I left my marriage I fell in love with my life partner I moved away uh, to this really creative town and I started this whole creative life and then all of a sudden I could feel the the top of my head closing off and I was just right back in my human conditioning again and so I became very passionate about learning like why do we feel emotional pain and how do we heal it so I processed a lot in my journals for 10 years and then I've been writing about that passionately uh, in e-courses um, mm -hmm. 
uh, over 20 e-courses on the art of emotional healing in the last 10 years. So what the next block is, is writing my, my true, 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 true story. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to write that with my partner. We're going to um, talk about that year. And we have a very mystical uh, love story. And we're going to write a book together after the Kindle's done. So, Oh, that's awesome. Uh, for having, so sorry. What, a, what an incredible spiritual awakening um, death is. You know, uh, I didn't have, I, didn't, I, mean, I think I had like four family members die in a year when I was 19. Um, but but then recently I had like four good friends die. Well, actually six, but four really good friends die within a year. And and it's almost like that moment where we realize, wait a second, I'm not just this body. There's more here. Uh, what is here? What is going on? You know, and, and then you, you, it's interesting how I've heard a lot, you know, the, that depression or pain really is, is an interesting portal into this bigger life, this more loving life, this more compassionate life. I have clients and, and group members and, and mostly women, um, some men, but they really just get stuck. Like they get stuck because they want it to be good. <laughs> if you will, right? They get, they get stuck because they say, I say, write a messy first draft. Who cares? Put it together. Just do it. And they, have a hard time with the word messy yes. and they they say well, what does that mean I'm like okay well what I'm you know I try to work my way around it by saying well you know it doesn't matter really how you write it just write something get it out it, you can't it's almost like you know you can't find the gold until you've gone through some of the dirt first you know you got to get in there and um so there's resistance that comes up because people want to do it right you know, how do you maybe, or, you know, what would you, how would you guide, uh, particularly a writer, uh, away from this idea that it, or, or how would you guide them about the idea that it needs to be done right, or they get frozen in the idea that it, it can just be okay being messy? Yeah. So what I would say is write it in a private journal as if no one ever is going to read it and yeah. never going to publish it and then do the emotional work if there are mm. people that are uh, socially shy about sharing or um, you know if there is emotional activation um, you know I say write it out raw and real first as if no one's ever going to read it um, I can't remember what writer said that she she was told, uh, she was given that very advice and she wrote it out raw. And then the publisher was like, we want it just as is, you know, <laughs> I think it was Elizabeth Gilbert's, uh, partner who recently died of cancer and she, um, she wrote her autobiography and it was very raw and very real. And then mm -hmm. she got really scared when they said, this is great. Well, just take it as is, you know? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she was terrified and had to do a considerable amount of emotional work to be ready for that. But, you know, you don't have to publish it either. You can you can go at your own pace. Like, certainly there's been aspects of my story I haven't been ready to share. and But I still have needed to write them out. And so somehow that just kind of underpins everything that you write anyway. You know, because there's a place, there's a journal, there's a place where you are being 100% real mm -hmm. with you. You're revealing you to you, you know. And that helps you develop that writer's voice and yeah, you can go in and call it out if you need to. But uh, I think it's writing it raw and real first as if no one will ever read it, you know? I yeah. love that. I think that, that that's totally important. You, you, you mentioned in another interview something that was great and I can't remember exactly how you said it. So let's see if we can figure this out. Um, you were talking about how there's a part of us that's it's, it stems from fear, the resistance because of societal pressures that we believe because when we're little, uh, it's kind of like we're taught we're not supposed to do certain things certain ways. Um, and you were mentioning how, you know, it's, it's, it's natural, right? Because our brains are looking for danger to, to like sort of accidentally consider creativity or something different or being yourself suddenly is a dangerous thing because you're no longer necessarily part of the tribe. 
right? But you, I remember that you and and uh, can you speak to that? You were really eloquent about that idea, and I, I mean, I had that. I was like, oh wow, that just occurred to me when you said it. Uh, that wow, we really are sort of subliminal, not subliminary, but like even if it's just for our, even if it's just for us, in some ways, we're breaking free of this collective to be ourselves and that can feel very scary yes yes because as children we have to outsource for love approval security and survival right so we right. so we have to really gauge the group like what can i say what can i do it intensifies even more when we get into our teen years and so there's this whole social monitoring system that all of us have and it it's very real it, it touches into our attachment system it touches into our nervous system so wow to a group, it feels like we're going to die in a very primal place in our nerv nervous system. So that's why even when we write in a private journal something that feels forbidden or something that's been shunned or shamed or bullied in the past, it can bring up a nervous system reaction that mm. is terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And so um, we have to do, I think, a considerable amount of work as writers creatives around calming those places down inside those younger places that just feel like oh my god if I express my truth I'm I'm gonna die it really feels like that sometimes to the very little parts of ourselves and so I do think that's actually what causes the resistance too it's just that I can't tell my truth like something terrible will happen we just don't know quite how to explain it but it does there's so much neuroscience available now on uh, attachment and it really does speak into why we can't um, express our truth and why it's so scary in our bodies to do so. That's awesome. I love it the way you said that and the nervous system reaction because, uh, you know, I, my heart goes out to my, you know, whenever I'm working with someone, a group member, you know, you, you have to be gentle. You can't force it. And uh, obviously, you know, it's not going to work. But when I hear that they're stuck in that way and I go, oh my gosh, that's, that's their nervous system. It's a, it's an, physiological shutdown moment um even though no one's going to see it but them and then sort of i think people though do you feel this way i think people sort of feel better when they can hear something like that they can go oh is that why you know i i this is a connection now they know that what that your thoughts create emotions with create chemistry in the body and then sometimes the chemistry can create the emotion and the thoughts um, but the, so, okay. Let me see my next question. I'm just going to see before I, before I try to, cause you're, you're just such chock full of awesome information. So here I said, does writing fulfill any purposes beyond functional for you? So do you feel more connected to the universe or God when you write? Um, I want to go there because I think that that gets overlooked in a big way. And I know that with art and creativity, you know that. Uh, and I think it's just something that is very much overlooked with writing. People get very linear. They get very judgmental. They go into the editor mind. But if you just let go, you know, you know, the let go, let God thing. But really, tell us about your experience. You've been, you've been there. You know that feeling. You've done it with your latest book, and you've gone deep into there about writing and connecting and channeling with with God in the universe. How how does that work for you like like do you get inspired by and, and sit down and just start writing or is it that you sit down and start writing and then all of a sudden you feel connected well I work with what's there every day so some days I feel inspired and some days I feel really emotional and I feel like uh, you know I think everybody's the same and so what I find is I just work with what's there I have a journaling process that, that I do every day that those, I go within my body and it sends them to my growth edge and I really listen to what is that uneasiness in my heart? What is that fear at the pit of my stomach? Um, and usually when I process that through writing or painting or drawing and I see it, then it just goes, whoop, just releases and then I can access the inspiration. I can't ever access inspiration if I'm repressing something that's sort of coming up from my edge to kind of heal and be witness so I just whatever comes up I just work with so some days the art and the writing can just be very ugly and dark angry or what have you and then the next day it could be visionary and beautiful and 
And of course, that's the stuff you want to just celebrate and put on Instagram. And it's like, woo! But there's a lot behind the scenes that that underpins all of that, you know. No, I love that. And by the way, thank you for mentioning that because the behind the scenes. I mean, I wish there was like a whole behind. The, there's got to be. I'm sure there is the behind the scenes of Instagram and Facebook. I had a therapist that once said to me, oh, so you mean your Facebook page is like the Reader's Digest version of your life? Because yeah, exactly. I was like, yeah, yeah. Because she, she was trying to like look at both. I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spew all my, my stuff out there. Um, I don't mind being vulnerable and authentic and transparent when it feels correct, right? There's a point where I have to process it privately um, and then you can, you know, of course there's room to go out there and be very, very authentic with that. But I think that you said that actually back during the write your true story series, I had asked you the question about, you know, when is it right to, to write about it? And you had specifically said, well, there's certain times where you may not be ready to write about it, um, or, or show it to someone and, and other times you will, depending upon your he- where you are on that healing timeline. Um, so I love that you, you mentioned the Instagram. I love also, I want to be, be all you writers out there, listen to Shelly when she says, working with what is there every day. What is there for that day? So if it's dark and, it's, and it's, you're repressing and you're holding back, work with that because that's going to open you up. Um, I think that we we feel so obligated to be the Instagram version of ourselves. <laughs> but we forget about the, the 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 other that that natural balance of being messy and dark and repressed and frustrated um, and angry. Yeah. Why maybe I'm mean, just I'm just gonna throw this out because I mean I love you for this. Why is it important to be messy and dark in in creativity? I mean, there there is a reason for it, right? That 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 that, that we I don't know if we're really in touch with that. Um, tell me more about being messy and dark in creativity and how it it's part of the process. Yeah. So you know, contemplating resistance. It's such an, a creative resistance. Such an amazing topic. And when I thought about it, I saw this image of, you know, there's a part of us that's supposed to go, da, 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 you know, charge forward with the, <laughs> and so there's that part that wants to go forward. And then there's all these other parts. And I think sometimes people don't think of themselves in parts, but we do have many different personality parts. Mm-hmm. And those are just parts of ourselves that just quite haven't resolved something that's happened in our life. So they're, they, they're usually younger parts of self that are stuck back in in past time at various events and we just haven't learned how to be there for them how to love them how to presence to them how to encourage them and how to be there Mm -hmm. and so what happens is we have this part that's like i'm going to charge forth and be this very creative visionary person and then there's all these younger parts that are saying no i'm afraid i want you to turn towards me and heal me i need to hear certain messages i need to know it's okay and so there is a considerable amount of inner work, I think, around being truthfully creative. And it involves ministering to younger parts of cells that don't feel resolved or complete or finished yet. And I I mean, I've never met someone who feels complete in, in all of their their past aspects. So so there is that visionary sort of spiritual where you get this vision about all these wonderful things you want to write or create. And then there's these human bits and bobs and pieces that are that are holding us back and so so that human uh you know insecurity and fear Mm -hmm. and and whatever is back there uh needs to be brought into the process as well yeah I love it I was um I love it I just love it so much it's so funny I feel like I have to hear this over and over and over again I mean I'm I've been you know you know, college, grad school, writing, workshops, you know, since I was five, <laughs> practically. But I, 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 as I get older, you know, I was joking. I said, oh, my gosh, I thought by the time I was 50, you know, so much would be resolved. And now is actually when things are getting more, I'd say, clear. And the, the, the grief and the clarity are sort of neck and neck. And I'm like, whoa, because, you know, life did not turn out the way I thought. And that's OK. So in so that's the, the thing. Like life did not turn out the way I thought. And that's OK. And I and I'm I'm working with those two energies. Uh, and I feel like 
oh, you said something about, um, oh, the da da da. Like, you want to go, yes, here I am. I'm doing this and it's going to be amazing. But when we really get intimate with ourselves and we get very present, then if we're feeling whatever we're feeling, we can give ourselves um, permission. You know, I, I feel like part of what you do in the world is so huge. Your, your contribution is really, I mean, humbling and amazing to me because you really give everyone permission to be themselves in a way that not, not everyone does. I mean, in, in, in your, your classes and your courses, there's something there for everybody. So I just want to say that out loud to everyone to, to really check you out because there's a lot of healing that you help uh, pro process um, in the world. And it's a permit. You really give permission. You know, when I, when I was watching your interviews and going back to your website, I felt like, wow, I needed to hear all this again, again, you know, and, and it, it's this, this repetition of going to the mentors and, and really going to your, your tribe um, allows you to have permission again. You know, I feel like it's, it's another layer, right? It's a, it's a, it's never ending layer. It's okay. Uh, so, so I just want to say thank you for that. You really make everything uh, better. <laughs> and I really mean that. I mean that in a huge way. <laughs> thank you. And you know what we discussed last time we, 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 we had a good laugh about, you know, if you waited till you were all healed, you'd never create anything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, it's really important to negotiate and work with the parts that are afraid. And, and I think negotiation is a big part of moving mm. through creative resistance. So if you have a part of you that wants to charge forward and, and write all day and another part that wants to lay in the sun, mm. then you can say to the part that wants to lay in the sun, you know, I'm just going to write for an hour or two and then we'll go lay in the sun. And so there's, there's negotiation. You don't have to be all completely healed, but you can work with those parts. And another, another, just another tool I wanted to mention that's really come strong up strongly for me recently is we develop a part, uh, many parts that are like social guards where they go out and scan the environment and sort of see where will we be acceptable and how do I have to fit in and I think this can really interfere in the writing process and so I think developing new protectors that that you know you have a I just recently did a collage that I just love of all these warrior women and I thought who what is this collage about and then I realized it was like a good protector it was a protector saying that I want you to be authentic and I am by your side with my sword and my fire and I am going to protect you in the authenticity process. So that's a very different kind of a protector than a protector that's saying, okay, uh, you know, tuck in your hips, uh, put a smile on your face, um, you know, uh, make sure your hair is perfect so that nobody criticizes you or whatever, you know, uh, th that's a very different kind of a protector. There's one protector that tells you to conform and then there's a new kind of protector you can build for your writing process, your creative process, your authentic expression process that is like standing next to you with whatever you need it to, 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 to be guarding you and saying, Hey, no matter what, you can be authentic and I'm here for you. I'm going to fight for you and I'm going to fight for your authenticity. So that's just another thing that's just recently come in around. I you know. love that. I love that. Actually, it, it gets me going because I, uh, we all have different motivations and I have um, that little rebel in me, you know, likes to, to you know, come on, you got this, you know, we're, we're, we're going to do it. You know, I'll, 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 I'll hold them off. I'll hold off the critics and I'll, uh, you, you go, go do your, go do you. I got this over here. And, uh, I love that. I love that. I kind of, you know, I love those movies where you're, you're just watching, there's the heroes going, no, 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 go, 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 you know? <laughs> and it's very interesting because all the, the integration of all these different parts, they, they walk with you. They walk inside of you because they're a part of you. So if you have a critic that, or sorry, uh, so you have a critic self, it's sort of um, a critic is a protector self because it's mm. criticizing you in the same way you've been criticized in the past. So it's mm. keeping you small. It's keeping you in a little box, right? And so a lot of people run into the critic in the in the in the creative process, and the critic is saying, "Oh, you better not be authentic. You better mm. not tell your truth. You could get bullied. You could get ridiculed. You could get laughed at, shunned, shamed, whatever." But then you have, you know, so that kind of critic 
kind of closes you down. You can see that happening in your body and the other kind of critic or, or the other kind of ally or, or protector, because um, the critic is a protector too. It's a social protector. It's more of a, you know, I walk with you. And like you said, yeah. you're your inner protector that says, you go girl, you write, you do that thing. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, that's great. That's great. I love how you, how you word that. Um, before we, before we wrap up one, I wanted uh, to ask this question. Why is it important to finish what you start in general? Like you don't have to finish everything. I get that. But in general, I, I feel like there's something on the other side of when you sign off on that painting or you hit the end um, and you get through that, that hump you, you you say okay this is done even a poem you know where you say this is done what is it in your experience with creativity and and people who are who are breaking through resistance and expressing themselves there is something to be said about you know exercising the finishing muscle for you and for what you've seen in other people tell us maybe a little bit of what of, of how just finishing it doesn't have to be perfect can have its own reward Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what immediately, um, immediately comes to mind when you ask that question is that every creation has a life of its own. It's like a personality part. Every personality part has its own likes, dislikes. It likes to wear different clothes. Same goes for a creation. So, um, you know, you were talking about time blocking. And so there's sort of, um, I think in order to finish for me, I always have to sort of to sort of time block something. So, you know, right now I'm doing, you know, a hundred journaling sessions I have over the past year. And I just like, I just, I just keep going until I finish it. And so it's like, you know, it's, it's in my journal right here. It's, this is, this is a baby that's been born. It's a period. It's a, it's a hunt. It's a consecration to mm, I love that. my growth edge in a hundred sessions. And so then, you know, so I think it's helpful to sort of set the finish line so you know when you're done, right? So I'm going to do 30 paintings or 30 collages or I'm going to do 100 journaling sessions or I'm going to write so many pages in my book. So I think you kind of have to know what the finishing line is so you can finish because then you're never, you're never really finished unless you know what it is. Yes. <laughs> But, you know, every creative process, I think, has a life of its own. And mm -hmm. so, you know, now I have this journal forever to go through the last year of my life and really look at what I was deeply processing on my own mm -hmm. personal growth edge. So um, it just would, it would just sort of feel like it was hanging there. I kind of want to see what happens when I get to 100. I want to look at one and I want to look at you know, all the way through to a hundred. And I want to see what happened in that period. So I always think something's going to happen. I'm going to set a goal to finish something. And from the start to the finish, there's going to be a process and it's going to be its own unique baby. It's going to be a process. And so you just need to know uh, what the finish line is. And when you get there, you get to see what happened in, in the whole process. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I love it. because Yeah. I love, like, I love really accepting that the journey is part of the of the whole thing, and then when I'm done, I get to go. Wow, what was that journey all about? Look at that. Um, and then, like you said, it has a. It's like it's baby. It's, it's had its own energy to itself. And why don't keep it dangling out there? I mean, again, you don't have to finish everything. We don't always start, you know, the perfect this or that or whatever. Um, I've definitely started a couple of books that I knew I should not be writing. I wrote because someone else told me it would be great. And I was like, God, oh, this is misery. And then I wrote what I wanted to write and it was better. So, or at least felt better. Um, awesome. So we're wrapping up. If you could leave us with one bit of inspiration and then you have a free gift. So what would you yeah. tell the writer out there who's struggling with resistance and she's, she's feeling a bit inspired? What maybe would be one little piece? Well, it's kind of all wrapped up into my free gift because I'm actually workshopping the um, ACIM book that I'm putting onto Kindle this year. So it's available for free for your audience. And so they can just go and, and it really feeds into the theme that we're talking about today of how we kind of grow up thinking we're about like this in a little box and our creativity starts to expand us. And so it brings the emotional and the psychological into the transpersonal into the spiritual and you know it's just a nice little simple creatively written 
uh, interpretation of ACIM, the 365 lessons. So, you know, if you're feeling sort of uninspired or stagnant or just feel like you need to work on some parts inside of yourself that don't feel loved or accepted, you know, uh, this is a this is my version of healing through depression and then I hope it serves other people as well because I've been getting great feedback for it so it's oh I'm so excited yeah that I'm so excited I, I'm I'm so grateful that you went and did that uh it's it's I mean it's really lighting me up knowing that you went and put your energy into that I feel like every woman is going to benefit from that in a way that's huge it's going to take the work and it's going to make it even bigger because that was a that was that has been a very difficult block for me and other women when we jump into ACIM and for those of you that don't know A Course in Miracles go check it out and make sure you download her free gift and check that out Oop, I should go that way because <laughs> Yes. Shelly, thank you so much. This has been awesome. I can't oh. thank you enough for joining us, for giving us your light and your inspiration and helping so many people out there keep moving into their dreams of being creative, writing, and just expressing themselves. Uh, thank you, Dawn. Bye-bye. Talk soon. Bye. <laughs> ExpressiveArtWorkshops.com.